Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Ghost Folio on CosOS using Big Bear CosOS, a third party app store. So, uh, a little bit about this series I'm going over Home Labs, so installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on discourse. So go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today, Ghost Folio. It's an open source wealth management software uh, built on Angular, Nest, JS, uh, Pr Prism, NX, plus TypeScript. Um, so the application empowers a busy people to keep track of stocks, ETFs, cryptocurrencies, and make solid data-driven investment decisions. Software is designed for personal use and continuous operation. Uh, they do have a premium offering. I have not used it. Um, so the ghost folio is for you if you are trading stocks, ETF, cryptocurrencies on multi uh, pl platforms, and then the these others. And then here's some features down here. And here's what it looks like. So that's what we'll be installing today. So now I'm going to start on Big Bear Cost OS. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this, and it's in the useful link section. This is a, a, a third-party app store for Cost OS. It's maintained by Big Bear Tech World and the Big Bear community. Um, it's got quite a few apps nowadays in it. Um, so I did make a how to install Big Bear Cost OS on Cost OS video, but I'm going to be going over in this video as well. So the custom app store is only supported on CosOS version 0.4.4 .4 or newer. So um, I'm going to scroll up to app store URL right here. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to go over to my CosOS and get the app store set up. So now I'm going to start on my CosOS and I'm going to go to app store and then more apps over here. A text input pops out. I'm going to paste in what I copied over in Big CosOS and then I'm going to press add. So now we have 184 apps available to us. So um, if you go over to categories, you won't see it yet. So I'm going to refresh the page, go back into the app store and go to categories and you can see Bibber Cost OS right here. So you can go into it and now you can see all the apps from Bibber Cost OS that you can install. So now I'm going to go over and uh, try to explain the Docker and Pose. So now I'm going to go over the search right here and type ghost folio. And then now I'm going to go in the apps, Ghost Folio, and then Docker Compose right here. So the CosOS app name is called Big Bear Ghost Folio. And then I'm going to set some services. And then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Ghost Folio. The container name is going to be called Big Bear Ghost Folio. And this is so Docker doesn't have to generate a random name. The image is coming off of Docker by default because there's no URL before this. And this is the Docker image. And then this is the, the Docker image tag. So restart and let's stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then I'm going to set some environment variables. So the, uh, the NV is production, the host, the port, the access, a uh, token salt, uh, the database URL, the JWT uh, secret uh, a key, and then the Postgres DB down here, and then the Redis right here. So I would recommend changing the JWT secret key and the access to token salt. And right now I'm using a UUID v4, and um, you know it's a UUID v4 is because of this four right here. And um, and same with this one. So now ports are uh, 3333 is on the host, and then the same port is on the container. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it. And then on the container, do not change the cont container's port. So now this, uh, this service right here does depend on the Big Bear Ghost Folio DB and the Big Bear Ghost Folio Redis and the condition service healthy on both these. And then now I'm going to set it in a Big Bear Ghost Folio network. And this is so we can use the uh, so, uh, the service names. 
and and sa uh, same thing on the Redis as well. So um, now the X Cloud still has information to explain uh, to the App Store. So the the NVs and the ports. And then now uh, we're in the Postgres QL da da database servers right here. So Big Bear Ghost Folio DB, that's the service name. And that's what we used up here to connect to the DB. And um, so the container name is so Docker doesn't have generate a random name. And then the image is coming off of Docker Hub again. And um, this is the Docker image. And then this is the Docker image tag. And Alpine just means it's using Alpine Linux and it's a smaller image compared to like a Ubuntu or something like that. So now restart po policy is unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it'll try to restart. And then environment variables. So the Postgres DB, the Postgres user, and the Postgres password, these should rhyme with up here. And, um, now the PG data var lib postgres ql data this is not the host side this is the container side so you do not uh I, I, you don't put the host a path inside of the environment variables and then um so so you know it's this right here var lib postgres ql data and then the health check a uh, pg is ready and then the got a ghost a folio and then the user so now volumes. So on the host side is data, app data, app ID, uh, app ID, which is a dynamic variable. It's gotten from the name up here. And um, so a data, a, D, a DB. This is on the host side. And then on the container side is varlib postgresql data. Networks. So we're going to put this in the exact same network as the service up here. And um, so... Now, the S cost OS information to explain the environment variables and the volumes. And then now we're in the Big Bear Ghost Folio Redis. And then, um, so the container name, that's so Docker doesn't have generated a random name. And then the image is coming off of Docker Hub again. And um, the Docker image is Redis. And then 7 Alpine is the Docker image tag. Restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then we'll try to restart. And then the command. So the require pass and then the, the password. And that, that health check right here, the volumes. So data, app data, app ID, and then data, a Redis. This is on the host side. And then on the container side is data. And then the app ID is gotten from the name up there. And then... so. So networks, Big Bear Ghost Folio network. We're going to put it in the same network. And then XCOS OS information to explain the volumes and ports. So now um, this right here, so a service, this should rhyme with the Redis password right here. So COS OS Redis password. The Redis host is the service name. And then the Redis port is 6379. So um, now... I'm going to define the network that we've been using on each service, Big Bear Ghost Folio Network. The driver is bridge, and that means it's a bridge network. And then COSOS specific information to explain to the App Store. So architectures, IMD64 and ARM64. And this is what the Docker image up here supports, Ghost Folio. And then, um, so the, the main service, Big Bear Ghost Folio, that rhymes with the service up here. And then um, the description for the App Store, the tagline for the App Store, a developer of this Docker image and software is Ghost Folio. And then the author is Big Bear Tech World of the Docker and Pose right here. And then the, uh, the, the icon being used, the thumbnail, the title, and then the categories, so we can see uh, what all the Big Bear Cost OS apps are quickly by hitting the category inside of the App Store. And then the port map is the same port, so 3333. And that rhymes with the host port up here of um, 3333. So, um, so that's a little bit about the Docker and Pose and how it works. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. 
uh, uh, you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So, uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down in the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So, let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to start on my Cos OS, and I'm going to go to App Store, and then search down here. I'm going to put Ghost in, and then now you see Ghost Folio, and it's coming from Big Bear Cos OS because of this category down here. So you can go into it, and then you can install, and then you can say continue in background. And what this is doing is it's downloading the Docker image off the registry, getting extracted, getting up with Docker and underneath, because this does use the Docker engine. It's also setting up the volumes and the network. So... This can take a little bit to do. So now we got it successfully installed and you can see it's not gray, so it's colorized, so it is up and running. So now I'm gonna go into the files and show you where they're located. So if you go in the files app right here, and CosOS makes this extremely easy, you can go in the app data, Big Bear Ghost Folio, and then you can see data, a DB, and the Redis. Um, you can go check mark them and you can download, copy, cut, delete, and cancel. You can also go up to the top right and download, copy path, rename, cut, copy, share, and then delete. So that's where your files are located. So now I'm going to go over to the Gus Folio right here and I'm going to go up to the uh, top right corner to the vertical dots. You can open into the web UI, you can set some tips. So this is like a notepad. You can go down the edit button right here. You can click it. Then you can go into the text area and you can type something in. Then press this check mark down here to save. Now it will reload the container and say Ghost Folio is okay. You can go back into the dots and then you can go to tips. You can see it did save. You can exit out of here. You can go into settings and you can edit some of the settings right here. Uh, you can also do it on the DB and the Redis. Um, and now when you go into the each service right here, you'll go up to the terminal and you can go into the container directly. You can also see the logs, great for debugging. Now, if you go into the next uh, service over here called Big Bear Ghost Folio DB, then you go up to the terminal logs. Now you will be in the DB and then same with Redis. If you go over here, you go into terminal logs. Now you'll be in the Redis and you can see the logs still. So uh, you can also ex uh, export the Docker Compose right here and you can exit out of here. You can um, check for updates from Big Bear Cost OS and then uninstall, restart, and power off and on. So um, I do uh, pr uh, uh, get the updates out as soon as possible, but uh, I do wait three days before I do the updates normally on GitHub, but sometimes I do get behind, and um, just let me know on the forum if you need an app uh, specifically updated. Now, when I update it, um, it will be on the App Store updated, but um, you'll have to wait uh, at least 10 minutes before the update uh, uh, comes to your cost OS. And then uh, once you do that, you can just say check for updates and it should update. So now I'm gonna uh, show you that the UI is working. So you can go in into the UI from here or you can open it from here. Now uh, you'll see the home screen like usual. And um, you can go to get started up here and then um, you can create an account now, a security token is created right here, so you can co copy it. Make sure you store the security token so somewhere to where you can always access it, because if you do forget it, you will not be able to access this account anymore. Um, so I'm going to agree and continue. So now you can see that uh, we have a sidebar, overview, a holdings, summary, and then markets. So now... If you go ahead and you go up to your user account, you log out. Now you're you're logged out completely. So now you can sign in again. And this is where I said you have to remember your security token. So you'll just paste it in right here and you can say stay si si signed in. And then you can press the sign in. So now we're back in the account. But if we forgot that security token, we wouldn't be able to get into the account. So uh you have a portfolio up here, 
and um, you can go to the holdings again and the activities. You can add an activity and then you can say it's uh, what type of it it is, a buy, a fee, a dividend, an interest, a liability, sale, or valuable. And then um, you can fill that information in and save. Um, you can also go to, uh, to allocations over here. And then um, you can go to x-ray. You can also go up here to accounts. And you have your first account right here, your my account. You can go ahead and edit it. And you can add a cash balance to it. And then you can also put a, no a note in right here. And you can change the currency. And then you can press the save button. Now you can see that it changed the cash balance. You can also go down here to the plus button and create you a new account. And then you can start with the cash balance and then put a note in. And you can also exclude from the analysis too. So you can save. So, so now you have two accounts. You can go up here to admin controls, aversion, user account, activity account, exchange rates, a user sign up, data gathering, housekeeping. You can flush the cash. You can also add a currency. Um, you can go to settings and you can add a platform in. You can add a tag. You can go to market data over here, job queue. And then you can go to users. And there's one user. You can go to resources over here and get ideas. And you can go to the about. You can see the change log of what everything changed uh, in, in, in the software. You can go up here to settings and you can uh, change the filtering. You can go up here to your user and go to my, uh, my ghost folio. And then you can change the presenter view, base currency, and then the language uh, lo locale. And then um, appearance, light, dark. You can change to Zen mode, bi biometric authentication, experimental features, and then there's your user ID. You can also export the data right here. You can go to access over here, and um, you can go down a plus button and grant access. Um, so that's a little bit about Ghost Folio. So I just went over step-by-step -step on getting Ghost Folio working on Cost OS using Bitbear Cost OS, a third-party app store. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video sessions or any community support, you can go to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.